The nature of the oldest house leaves the FBC exposed to a wide variety of threats. From the obvious hiss invasion, altered items, the mold threshold, and people themselves, danger is around every corner. Within the Panopticon, we meet one of the most mysterious enemies within the story, the former. Even though Jessie was the first to identify the threat, the history of this entity began long before she arrived to the oldest house. During expeditions by the astronauts, many have reported a mysterious figure within the astral plane. Footage has even been taken of this entity and brought back for analysis. A memo written by Langston details some odd behavior that can be attributed to the former's influence. Both the Arctic Queen and Pink Flamingo have been exhibiting increased aggressiveness and manifesting new effects. After an investigation into revised containment procedures, keeping eye contact seems to pacify the Arctic Queen. A ritual akin to worshipping a deity ends up being what keeps it from acting up. Ever since these two altered items were affected, both Panopticon staff and astronauts have been vanishing in increasing numbers. Due to the timing, it is a logical conclusion that the former is responsible for the disappearances. While attempting to save Philip from fridge duty, Jesse encountered the former for the first time, and then later when attempting to return the Pink Flamingo to the Panopticon. Both times, the director was brought into a corrupted version of the astral plane. Rather than being purely white, the void of space was darkened, presumably due to the former's corruption. Jesse notes that it speaks like the board, but she's unable to understand it. The board reaches out to Jesse after each encounter and has some ominous words for her. They warn the director not to buy into the former's lies, or else. They deny knowledge, but refer to it as a previous disappointment. It is apparent there is something going on, and that they want us to do what they say, but not question the reason or their motives. After the final confrontation, Jesse does not encounter this entity again. However, it is very likely that the former is not defeated, and will again pose a threat at some point in the future. Now that we have covered the information presented within the game, we are left with several questions about the nature of this being. What is the former trying to do? What is the relationship to the board? Why can't Jesse understand it? And what is the former's story? I will attempt to answer these questions with the information at hand. If any new information is released in the upcoming DLC, a supplemental video will be released. Before addressing these questions, there is one topic we must cover first. In the Alan Wake video on Alan's Nightmare, I mentioned that the contents of our personal unconscious dictate how we interpret symbols. When we see a gun, we can have a vision of either a protector or an aggressor, based upon our personal experiences in life. Altered items are given power based upon the energies from the collective unconscious. The red light altered item teleports people away when the light turns red. This is based upon two things, our standard traffic signals in the childhood game Red Light Green Light. Because we all grew up with it, the unconscious concept of what they represent is in the collective unconscious. The board is involved in attaching these unconscious energies to altered items and OOPs, as touched upon by Dr. Darling and shown through the ritual of binding an object of power. The first clue of the former's motives are the fact that altered items began behaving differently after its influence began. If the powers displayed by them are reflections of the collective unconscious, then those energies were changed. Before the former's influence of the Arctic Queen, the only observed effect was that the children's drawings could not be removed. After being influenced, it required constant ocular contact or it would lash out, leading to the deaths of various FBC agents. The pink flamingo was known to cause meteorological and weather effects, but after it created an endless hallway that kept forcing Jesse away from it. The result for the first item would be that the former is forcing worship upon the Arctic Queen, and by extension, itself. The change to the flamingo may have been a response to Jesse's first encounter with the former. Its new effect was designed to keep Jesse away from it and not let her interfere again. If it can change the symbol's meaning, it can change the paranatural effect of the altered item itself. One common example for the change of symbolic meaning is the imagery of the inverted pentagram. Adopted by occultists, the most common imagery, specifically in Satanism, involves the image of Baphomet, where the top points are the goat demon's horns. This demonic interpretation is generally the dominant perception of the symbol. However, it does have other meanings. 
Much like how the four sides of the pyramid represent the manifest world in its entirety, the four points at the top represent the four elements as well. The bottom point represents the spirit. This symbolically shows the current state of being is that matter is dominant over spirit. In some traditions, the goal is to metaphorically turn the pentagram upright so the initiate allows their spirit to transcend the material. These are two different interpretations of the same symbol. Based upon what we have seen, it appears the former's goal is to forcibly alter the unconscious perception of these symbols to suit itself. Whether that motivation is rooted in self-indulgent vanity, or a more nefarious purpose, who can say? During the hotline calls, the board refers to the former as the rebel faction or dissent, as well as state that it has been fired. Dissent meaning to have an opinion outside of the majority. This implies that it may have been a member of the board at one point, but due to a difference in opinion, the former was fired. Based upon the current actions and the board saying it is stealing slash linking altered items, the difference of opinion may have been in how to properly use the power of attaching unconscious energy to the altered item or object of power. This power can easily be misused to sow chaos across the infinite thresholds connected to the oldest house. Imagine if the symbol of the full moon actually turned every individual into a werewolf. This energy is within our collective unconscious, so theoretically, the board could cause a worldwide bloodbath once a month if they assigned the energy the wrong way. After all, who is to say the moon itself cannot become an altered item? If the former, through its actions, proved to be dangerous, the board would have no choice but to fire him. This doesn't appear to have stopped it, however as the former continues to cause problems by stealing the Arctic Queen and the Pink Flamingo. If this is the case, it is understandable why the board would tell Jesse to not believe the former's lies. All symbols have a defined meaning in the collective unconscious. Any dissent from that would be a misrepresentation at best, or an outright lie at worst. While there is no direct evidence to support a theory on this, I have a hypothesis. Jesse has been shown to unconsciously understand words of the board while in the astral plane or through the hotline. After the ritual for the service weapon, Jesse states that the pyramid spoke to her. As discussed in my previous video on the Black Pyramid, it symbolically represents the filter that allows unconscious energies and information to be made conscious. We only understand the words due to the subtitles and Jesse does intuitively. Intuition is simply our conscious minds acting upon information from a part of our unconscious that we are not aware of. There is a reason for it, we just don't understand why we think or feel something. Ever met someone for the first time and felt they gave off a bad vibe without any idea why? That is your intuition. Since the former was fired, it would be unable to have access to the Black Pyramid. Without that filter for the unconscious, Jesse would be unable to consciously understand the noise of these entities when they speak. This is, in my opinion, why our director can intuitively understand the board, but not the former. I believe this is also why we see a physical body for the former. Being banished from the pyramid, it is manifest in the astral plane. Also, the corruption in this region of the astral plane may be due to him forcing changes in the collective unconscious without the benefit of the Black Pyramid to act as a proper filter. To sum up, the former appears to have been a previous member of the board who became a rebel faction and was fired. This former member continued to link altered items without the oversight of the board for reasons yet to be explained. This led to a corruption of the areas of the astral plane linked to the Arctic Queen and the Pink Flamingo. Jesse severed its connection to the Arctic Queen, which made this entity aware of her. So the former retreated and changed the effect of the Pink Flamingo to keep her away and from interfering again. After being beaten back a second time, the former vanished. But it is naive to assume it is gone for good.